Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel. It's Cato again. And I I want to say I just got back from PowerCon, but that's not, that's not entirely true. I did take some time to rest because it was a 13 hour drive. Took a lot out of me. Got a little lost my voice a little bit because there was so much chatter going on, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, I wanted to put together just uh, a quick highlight reel of sorts. There's no way I could possibly capture everything that went on at PowerCon, but there were a few booths that stood out that I really wanted to show you guys some things I wanted to talk about. Um, let me start off by saying it was awesome. It was a fantastic convention. Um, so many really nice, really kind people. I met some uh, some fans of the channel. I met some fans of Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. If you don't know, uh, I was at the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom booth helping out uh, Jason along with uh, good friends. Now, I'm glad I can call them good friends. Um, Eddie and Derek, who were there uh, to help out. Uh, I say to help. I basically was just there to ring people up because these people, Jason and Eddie and Derek, they are uh, irreplaceable. And I was just there to hang out for a bit, help as much as I could talk to some folks about AWOC and have a good time. But I did get to explore uh, the con some while we were incredibly busy, thankfully busy at the uh, Spiro AWOC booth. I did get to walk around, enjoy the con a bit, meet some cool people and I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, if you'd be so kind to take a look at it, if you were curious about what went on at the PowerCon, uh, I was boots on the ground, and I did some video, met some folks, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So that's what I'm going to do in this video, right after the intro. It's Kato! All right, so I wanted to start off with the booth that was directly across from us. It's a company, uh, well, a brand called Cyberzoic, and they they have another line, uh, Beasts of the Mesozoic. They're a dinosaur-centric toy line. Uh, I'll be honest, I did not know a single thing about this, but uh, staring at them from across the way, right across the, the aisle that I was on, uh, they got my attention, and again, some fantastic people. Uh, we had a lot of fun, really good people. The line Cyberzoic, as we go through here, you'll see is going to remind you a lot. Now, some of these earlier pictures here, like these guys, these are from their Beasts of the Mesozoic line, completely dinosaur-centric toy line. They look fantastic, highly articulated, very well detailed and painted uh, dinosaur figures. But you'll start seeing a few other things pop in here. That T-Rex looks awesome. If you look here, the first thing that my brain took me to, and I think most people that looked at this, was Dino Riders. And I don't want to, one, I don't want to belittle Dino, Dino Riders because that was a fantastic toy line and, and on its own. But I also don't want to pigeonhole these guys into being, uh, you know, oh, they're just Dino Riders with more steps. Um, I don't think that's a fair uh, claim because the idea of this, which by the way, this, this, uh, Kickstarter for Cy uh, Cyberzoic is going to kick off on October 3rd. I'm sure to post more about that because these guys were awesome and the toy line looks awesome. So what you have are these mech like or mech armored dinosaurs along with these human characters that you'll see in a second. Uh, what you'll notice here, see that uh, completely skeletal mech uh, flying dinosaur right there? That's armor. So that armor will actually come apart. Uh, that character will come apart and become armor for another dinosaur. Absolutely love that gimmick, and I'll show more of that in a second. So these figures here, they're, I just want to say they're roughly about four inches tall. So there's your three and three quarter, four inch scale. There's another armored uh, dino there on the left that uh, will become armor for an actual dino. So the idea is these uh, humanoid or human characters, they mount these dinos and uh, this armor, this futuristic armor on these dinosaurs, and they go to battle with something you'll see here shortly. I uh, love how the dinosaurs look. Absolutely love the armor. So this armor right here, this is a good example. So this armor is its own toy, right? It, it looks like its own thing. But when you go over to this next dinosaur right here, that armor is 
the dinosaur you just saw the little mech dinosaur you just saw becomes the armor for this dinosaur and of course you have the uh, human riding on top of that i think that is a brilliant cool playability so what are they going up against you have humans riding mech armored dinosaurs fighting dragons what the man that sounds awesome so they had me hook line and sinker right away it doesn't hurt that this video isn't going to do this dinosaur this uh dragon justice this thing is absolutely gorgeous look at all that articulation you got one two three what four joints there in the legs the tail is articulated i believe the wings are articulated the one thing uh, they mentioned is that the purple that you see on the wings right there is actually going to be much more translucent but look at the paint on that and this is just one of the dragons that they had available or showed at the at the booth they said i think they had three others uh, in development that look uh, completely unique to this so multiple types of dragons fighting dinosaurs with humans with mech armor it's freaking awesome i can't wait for that so october 3rd this kickstarter will start off so going wrong you've got again more of the four inch look at the tail on that dragon that thing looks so awesome uh going across to more of that mech armor down to their actual uh, beasts of the mesozoic line and then they showed the prototypes for these six inch figures uh, of the line as well and they look amazing uh, you know, I'm much more personally, I'm much more of a fan of the six inch figures than I am the four inch, but still, I think they all look great. <clears throat> I love that the uh, four inch figures are, are look to be very well articulated, lots of detail. Uh, and you, you're combining three things that I really like sci fi, dinosaurs, and dragons. There's really nothing to dislike about this. This is a little bit of artwork they had on the table as well as, uh, I think this was one of their exclusives. These are, I believe, glow-in-the-dark little miniature dinosaurs. Um, there's the Triceratops there from Cyberzoic, all the way up to there. Uh, that's their Beast of the Mesozoic uh, uh, banner that they had up there. Um, next, we have one of my... Uh, this. Listen, this became one of my favorite booths. Uh, one, I got to meet uh, Ace from Ramen Toys. Uh, and of course, Patrick from Riot Press. Patrick from Riot Press has a comic and a toy line, uh, Johnny Phantasm. Uh, they look amazing, little four inch figures uh, there with uh, Riot Press and their comics. Uh, and they also, if you watched one of my, there's the Johnny Fan Phantasm comic book, which is a really, really fun read. If you get a chance to pick that up, I highly suggest it. And of course, if you watch one of my latest reviews, he allowed me to look at the PowerCon exclusive, Patrick did, of their Last of the Seekers Surge figure, which you'll see it's the green chested figure there in the center. Um, check that video out if you hadn't. But he allowed me to take a look at that. And this is the rest of those. Well, almost the rest. You've got Max and the Shadow Drone and the, uh, the other uh, figures in that line. Or at least that's uh, about to be available uh, through the Kickstarter. That uh, if, if anyone Kickstarted that, they're also available through Big Bad Toy Store. So there'll be a 22-page comic. A mini comic comes with each one. And you have uh, a few of the Seekers there. There's another one that's available through Agabus. Dot com that'll be um, a nod to Starscream. It'll be in the classic Starscream colors. Really fun toys, uh, really good people. You're going to hear me saying good people a lot because they were all awesome. A couple of the miniatures they have there. Uh, here is your quick look at the next line of figures in the Last of the Seekers line, and that are that is the uh, vehicles. If you see the blue and yellow vehicle and the red vehicle on the right there, uh, that will be in the next wave. Uh, or two of Last of the Seekers. So there will be jets and vehicles. I'm sure it sounds familiar. Uh, it's obviously a love a love letter to uh, everything Transformers. Moving around that booth, we start with the ramen toy side. Thank you, Ace, very much for the hats. I appreciate that. Some Last of the Seekers artwork. Here is a good quick look at the accessory pack for the ramen racer. Got to see that in person. And not the finished product, but still, it is uh, massive, and it looks great. But there's your accessory packs. Of course, the orange uh, ramen racer. 
uh, whatever you want to call that. That's what that is. You got the black ramen racer there with the flame effect on the engine. Of course, the uh, <clears throat> that might recognize that head sculpt in there. Maybe, maybe not. On back to the, I'll call it the Hazard Lee. Uh, on to the accessory pack again. You can see the flames, the LEDs in there. And here is a uh, was my first look at the prototype for the great white this is the test shot for the great white the second in their machina labs um well yeah machina labs uh transforming vehicles of sorts you know you know what i'm talking about here you know what this is there's no secret here but uh yeah there is the great white in its full vehicle mode uh stay tuned to the channel you may get a closer look at this uh, than just in this video uh, on above that, you have the great white, uh, the pilot there for the great white, one with the mask, one without, both unpainted, obviously. And you have the great white in its transformed or its battle mode uh, with the submarine. You got the periscope, you got the fins on the front, tires and fins uh, on the, the front there. And there is a quick look at the MKN 03 which will be the reissue of the red gull wing. Notice no stickers. Uh, this is a, again, a test shot, but no stickers. It's a little different. So the packaging will be different. You'll have decals rather than tampo, but there is your MKN 03. Uh, moving on from there, we get a look at the bad to the bone uh, in grayscale. This is the test shot of that alongside some Masterverse figures. That thing is massive. It looks awesome. Uh, I don't collect a lot of Masterverse. So I, I, this will probably be one of the few things that Ramen puts out that I actually don't get. But interestingly enough, below that, we have two of his test shots for He-Man and Skeletor. Uh, yes, He-Man and Skeletor, not some crazy third-party name. Uh, the reason is he's actually trying to get this license through Mattel. He's got these uh, made up to present to them, and he wants to officially license these through Mattel. Uh, and let me tell you, they look absolutely brilliant. If you can, uh, oh yeah, moving on down to the Aces of Aviation. Uh, I did pre-order all three of these. Uh, this is the first wave. Maybe, I don't know if he's going to do more or not, but this is the Aces of Aviation three-pack, all three pilots. Uh, and of course, if you go on their website and order all three pilots, um, oh, actually, I think that giveaway is over. I think that ended on the 13th. Uh, you ordered all three, you get the Ghost Rider upgrade uh, for this head sculpt. I mean, it looks familiar to me, but I'm not going to say the name of it. But yeah, you actually get that head sculpt if you do the upgrade. Uh, that head sculpt looks uh, oddly familiar and good too. Coming on up, this is probably the figure, the figure of the con for me. Um, outside of the Animal Wars, the King of Stuff, which obviously I'm in love with, um, the Marshall and Three Zero. Um, these look brilliant. Here's your look at the accessories for the Marshall, the necklace, a couple of the uh, there's the weapons. You can see three zeros additional head sculpt and hand sculpts there. They're all in grayscale, but we're going to go. Oh, and of course, accurate little pickaxe weapons there. Love how this looks. Get a good close up shot there of that head sculpt for the, one of the head sculpts for the Marshall. And however you feel about this, I can tell you that in person, it looks outstanding. Not just good. It looks amazing. Uh, coming on up to the rest of the marshal he looks great there there's the additional head sculpt with that furrowed brow you've got his cloak there behind him listen i can't tell you enough how good this looks but three zero if if this thing comes out even remotely looking as good as this test shot does three zero may be figure of the year for me because this thing looks absolutely brilliant saddle bags on his shoulders harness is coming over with the shotgun shells there on his harness that head sculpt looked great the way that the leg i hope this thing stands well the uh his rifle splits in two and we'll go into each one of the holsters on the back uh, apparently there's they're trying to work out a good way to do the head sculpt in a way that the articulation uh does well enough with all that big mane back there but i believe they're thinking of two separate pieces in order to be able to do that 
I can't express enough how good that looks. It may be figure of the year for me. Um, 80s Commanders, that's another one I haven't really gotten into, but seeing them in person, I kind of wish I did. They look absolutely great. Masters of Diverse Head Sculpts, uh, you could have picked those up there. I know the people that got those absolutely love them. Uh, lots of great stuff from Ramen and Riot Press. Coming over to the Four Horsemen booth, we get our look at the Monkey King. Really, I just wanted to show the Four Horsemen display because it looks so good. Headless Horseman uh, the, from the figure Obscura stuff. You got the Headless Horseman, Monkey King. Uh, I think they, I think Krampus comes up here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> Father Christmas. Forgive me if my voice gives out a bit. Uh, yeah, there's Krampus. He looks great. So there's the figure Obscura side. Um, we come on around. We get a little more Mythic Legions. Uh, I think, I think for the most part, I'm going to bow out of Mythic Legions. It's not that they're not great. It's just something's got to give. And uh, I am. Uh, in on a great majority of their figure obscura stuff for sure, but I am I, I'm pretty much 100% on board with their Cosmic Legions, which will be coming up in just a second. Um, I got a few of the figures there. I pre-ordered a couple originally, and I was more than happy with those. And the rest of the line looks absolutely brilliant. I love their display. So. Can't wait to get more of these. It looks awesome. Each and every figure felt and looked good. I did get Kragnar. I think that's his name. I uh, picked Kragnar, the four-armed alien up. This gray alien, listen, I'm not the Mythic Legions expert. I'm not going to get the names right. Uh, this thing, to be what should be like a super simple figure, looks outstanding. That grayscale gray alien. I love that. Um Big green blob. I can't remember his name. I'm not going to pretend to know all these. Um, love the uh, skeleton head inside of that. Moving on to, I wanted to show this display because I thought it looked awesome. I, I'm really jealous. Then we go to what I really couldn't wait to pick up at the con. So I love tribute tribute figures and Mythic Legions, Four Horsemen. They normally, Mythic, Four Horsemen num normally does that exceptionally well. So this is their Kragnar mold. I think it's their Kragnar mold. I might be wrong. But anyway, irrelevant. Uh, this is a tribute to Whiplash from Masters of the Universe. You've got some furry blue cloth goods there. Uh, huge figure. I've got him. Picked him up. And this is their tribute to Manny Faces. So I picked up both of these at the con. Was thrilled that I was able to do that because they look awesome. And I will most certainly have a review of these coming up on the channel because they look absolutely amazing coming across to the rest of the cosmic legions line yeah i'm i'm in they have blown me away of course i had to show valiverse you know i've been a big fan of valiverse uh from day one really since i knew about them but we get another shot here of some of their upcoming stuff their upcoming exclusives the um of course uh, i showed there a second ago the let me back up just a bit we have the ghillie suits the green and white ghillie suits there. They look brilliant. Then we come across to the vehicles. There is gray and desert sand. These are huge. Now, he did announce the price. I wasn't able to go to the um, panel because I was uh, was working the booth, working the AWOG booth, but I did get to get the highlights from there. Um, 185, man. That is... If you see these in person, 185 is a, a steal. Absolutely worth it. I'm absolutely getting at least one, maybe two, because they look awesome. I, I hope uh, I can pick up the desert sand. I think that is that's probably my favorite uh, color scheme anyway, uh, outside of black and red, which uh, leads us to something else later. I'm going to buzz through these pretty quick. This is uh, what we've seen pretty much throughout um, the Valiverse stuff before, of course, Warpath Eclipse. Pandora, bloody Pandora. I missed out on Gemini. It's a horrible shot here. Paused. I, I was going too fast, but uh, they were out of stock of Gemini the rest of the, the con. I missed that. I, I I hate that I missed that because I really wanted Gemini. But uh, yeah, so you got the rest of the line there. Um, all great stuff. I have all these highly recommended if you haven't picked up Valiverse at all. Picked up a few of the uh, new kits, the screaming face kits for the female wave love those more importantly uh the power con exclusive i did get to pick that up uh swarm horde 
the black and red, apparently a nod to Hordak. So I was really thrilled to be able to pick that up. And of course, Condor uh, at the con, you could pick him up for $45 without points or $15 with 20 action points. This was a brand that I knew nothing about. It's Forma Toys. I believe it's called Forma Toys. Uh, Legends of the Dragoon uh, or Dragon. So this is their PowerCon exclusive. You can see it's obviously Motu inspired. Uh, uh, this is another one that I can't express enough about how great the paint looks on these and how fun these figures are. Uh, I didn't pick any up, but one of the coolest things about it, like this three pack playset, actually turns into, or the three pack box packaging turns into a full on playset, which I think is a genius idea that more toy companies should pick up. I think uh, Masters of the Universe should do that as well. Um, all these great looking figures. I just thought they were cool because they uh, reminded me a lot of Masters of the Universe. But the colors on these are brilliant. Um, you get that. I'm not the only one, right? That Motu feel for the, the molds. There's a good look at one of the boxes that folds out and becomes this huge uh, castle playset. I think that is something that's missing in toys are playsets. Coming up. That's yeah, that's it. Dragon Ore. I really got that name wrong, didn't I? Now we come up to the Eagle Force Monster Force uh, booth. Uh, Eagle Force is their four-inch line. Like them. Uh, don't I don't collect those, but I think they look brilliant. You've got Long Box Heroes, which is the Rocketeer. You saw their Cops and Crooks line, which a uh, little smaller figures they had there. Um, coming on across is what I was really interested in. So uh, you've got. From their Voyagers line here, uh, you got one prototype there. Love how these look. Uh, probably some, not something I'll pick up, but now Zombified. Definitely interested in that. Who doesn't want a Zombified astronaut? I know I do. I think the last time I saw that, it was in Grayscale at Joe Fest. So it's cool to see that um, in color. Then, of course, you've got, uh, let's see this. Are we leading into, yeah, we're leading into Monster Force, which is what I'm really excited about. Uh, love this. Uh, it goes in line. One thing I didn't get a good video of is uh, Shardimus's, um Street Humans. This To me, these, these could go hand in hand together. They could play well together. Monster Force, absolutely looking forward to that, and I think it's awesome. Uh, especially the big, uh, I see the Cthulhu Doctor and the big, uh, Sasquatch wielding machine guns. I think that is that's just awesome. So looking forward to that. Monster Force and Spark. Uh, there's their naughty and nice Santa Claus. Um, their version of Krampus, the head sculpt for Krampus over there. Love all these. I think it's great, but Monster Force is really the one that I think uh, speaks to me the most. I really like the idea of having these crazy monsters. Um, not uh, sure about these. I didn't ask about these, but I do think they look good. They remind me, Multiverse Massacre reminds me of uh, the uh, a video game I played, and I can't remember what it was. I think it was, I uh, can't remember. Anyway, and of course, I had to end this off, or at least end the video section off with the booth I was at. This uh, this table, uh, the, the diorama for this was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, I know who made it. I'm not going to get their name right, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm sure someone in the comment section, especially if Eddie and Derek or Jason watch this, they can put in the comments uh, who actually made this playset or this diorama. It is stellar. But you've got most of a Wave 1 on here along with some Wave 3, a little bit of Wave 2, some of the head packs. You've got a cool version of Pale back there with some soft goods. I'd like to get – I think Eddie mentioned – I think it was Eddie or Derek that mentioned that uh, – this was, oh, it was Eddie. This was the cape for King Grayskull. And I, it looks so awesome on Pale. It's ridiculous. Uh, I, I hate that I don't have a King Grayskull to do that with. You got the gold legionary uh, up there in the top. That's going to be from the Gamer Wave. Uh, we had all of Wave 1 on, on site. We had Wave 2 on site. Um, along with it, we had uh, some interesting surprises. So, this is, we've we've seen these before. This is the Gladiator Wave. There's a Gladiator Pell, Gladiator Atreyu. Uh, don't look behind yet. We'll talk about that in a second. You have the uh, Gladiator Mongrel, which is the first one that we have with the moving jaw, and a Hawkin right there beside him. Then we get 
our first little preview of wave five. There's, uh, I think wave five or wave six, uh, maybe wave six, but anyway, there's King Hannibal. That's the painted prototype. It's, it's just a paint master. Uh, there will be articulation in the chest, uh, in the abdomen. There'll be an ab crunch there. Again, this is just a paint master, so it's it, we couldn't mess with it that much, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Our first look at a new scale within a walk there is King Hannibal. Uh, beside King Hannibal, you have Final Battle Pale. I'm not going to spoil the story, but uh, there's a reason he's called Final Battle Pale, and there's a reason he's in that armor. And there's your first look at him it's pale with a new head sculpt, new haircut, some new clothes. He's good to go. Beside Pale, we get this interesting fella, and uh, I don't know how much I want to spoil of this, but you'll recognize the color. He kind of looks familiar. He looks like another villain that we've seen in the line so far. Uh, we'll just say this is a more primal version of Kali, maybe without giving too much away. So along that scale, of course, uh, man, he looks awesome. That head sculpt is great. That big, huge sword looks awesome. Uh, and of course, we get uh, another look at our new lizard or reptile uh, buck. So lots of cool stuff coming from AWOC. Uh, of course, we have more of the Wave 2 there as well. There is a good look at the con exclusive, Tanger, uh, which is a repaint of Thane or the Horrid Brute. Um, I was not aware that a whip came with him. He does come with a whip. The whip is not wired but it is actually, I think it's actual leather or pleather. It's, it's definitely um, movable. It's not a stiff, not a stiff whip. So you can move it around. I think you should be able to get a little wire in there and make it bendy wire. And our look at the ancients with the new armor packs that were available at the con. They will be available outside of the con in September. So this was your chance to get these a little early if you were actually present at the con. So you have... Uh, all three ancients with all three uh, loot pack or armor packs there. Uh, the head packs, what we've already seen on the channel before, if you've watched, and more of the weapon packs. And that is pretty much all of the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom booth. Uh, before I go on any further, I want to say that the coolest thing that happened at this con was meeting people. Uh, meeting the fans and there's going to be there. I've got more pictures that I'll show later um, throughout Facebook and stuff like that. But there's a few, there's there were a few pictures I wanted to highlight <clears throat> and that's coming up next. So I got to meet a lot of cool people, a lot of cool fans of the channel, but I wanted to show off a few of the figures that really stuck out to me first. Um, three zero uh, stole the show. Love, love, love the Marshall and three zero. I think they look brilliant. Um, I am very excited to see what Raman does uh, in conjunction with Mattel with the Masters of the Universe. I hope they get the license. I would love to see them do something official. And I didn't get a video of this, but the Mondo uh, toys section with the massive Panthor and Battle Cat that they had here. This thing is 500 bucks. It is huge. That head is the head of that cat is the size of a baseball and you have beast man and trap jaw i wanted to show those two they are huge 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 and very cool this was the last day i finally got a picture with him, robo from the foosh i was really stoked to meet him super nice guy had a lot of fun meeting him of course same on that last day trying to get everything closed out i got to meet russ uh chartermus really been watching him for years super super nice guy can't say enough nice things about him he was he was just really nice. Uh, it was cool seeing him in person. Uh, he laughed like crazy at the fact that he had the power cord in his hand because we were all unpacking and putting the boxes up there. I thought that was great. Uh, but nothing, nothing can take away from the new family. So uh, myself there, of course, taking the little stupid selfie there. But, of course, Jason, um, Eddie there in the center, uh, Derek all the way to the right of the screen, and Arlen. Uh, to at the upper left of that, just above Jason. Um, I consider these guys true friends now, along with a bunch of folks that I met at the con. So if I saw you at the convention, uh, if I got to meet you and talk to you, thank you so much. You guys were all awesome. Um, and Eddie, Jason, 
Derek, Arlen. It was such a pleasure to meet you and everyone else there. Met new friends, new faces. I've I've not had this much fun at a con in a really long time. Really looking forward to more. And I know Legion's Con is around the corner. I'm not sure I'll make that one, but much love to all these guys right here. They were absolutely uh, gentlemen and scholars. And I I would I'd hide a dead body for you, fellas. And that's the truth. That is uh, that's the extent of PowerCon. I wanted to give you a little walkthrough. I'm probably talked too much, but I was really excited about sharing that with you guys. Um, had a really good time. Can't wait to do it again. Uh, the wife loved it. She's she's a trooper. She joined in and hung out and um, did her thing while we were there. And she came down and saw us and knew that I was working and sweating my tail off. We were so busy. It was a lot of fun. Lots of cool stuff. Very cool people. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know in the comments uh, what uh, what you're most excited about within that. And uh, you'll see more of the AWOC stuff. I went through that pretty quickly, but we're going to do an episode of the podcast in the next few days. And we'll talk more uh, in detail about what's going on with AWOC, what we had there, and what's next. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what... Uh, what in that video you're looking forward to, or if you were introduced to something new that you're looking forward to uh, until next time, this is Kato signing out. See you around like a donut. <laughs>